Just a few weeks ago, I did a video on my favorite iPad animation apps, and the app that I liked the most was one called Toon Squid. Well, I didn't know it at the time, but they were preparing a 2.0 update. It is a huge update to this app. Most apps, when they roll out an update, there's a bunch of quality of life things, maybe one or two key new features. This effectively doubles the size of what this app can do. They have added so, so much. Everything from motion paths to bone rigging. They've overhauled the vector tools. So much stuff. This is now on par with a lot of desktop animation apps. And so we're going to dive in and I'm going to cover some of the features that are here. Now, I do want to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this video. This, this app just came out uh, just a few days ago, last week. And it's made by a small team. In fact, it might just be one person. And while a lot of the features are there and these features work really well, the documentation hasn't quite caught up to the features yet. There is a hand book that describes many of these new features, but it doesn't exactly tell you how to use these features. So as I was diving in, I got a little frustrated here and there trying to figure out how to do things like bone rigging or how to actually make a motion path. Even though it explains what a motion path is, it doesn't say press this button to make the thing. And I spent hours and failed to do many of those things. And so while I wasn't able to make my own examples, there are some examples I was able to download so I can show you. And in a few weeks, there's gonna be some tutorials out there. So even though the app is ready right now for you to use, maybe pump the brakes a little bit on what you can actually accomplish with this app over the next few weeks. So let's take a look at a lot of these new features. So here we are in the app along the bottom. If we press this button, I'm going to be able to see my timeline. And then up here on the right hand side, I have my layers that was there before. And I have my uh, preferences, my properties they are called here. A lot of these new features are baked right here into this properties panel. And that is this little button here called effects. So if I go here and I press the plus, it's gonna bring up all of these new effects. So there's some like, for example, the Gaussian blur, and you can see I have it on my background right here. And I could scrub it up and I could make that background really blurry, pull it down and it has no blur at all. This is also non-destructive. So you can kind of toggle this on and off as you need it. What's really cool is say down here in my timeline, it's added a keyframe where I've made a change. I'm gonna jump forward 12 frames and I'm gonna really blur this out. Now I've just created an animation with it. So if I scroll back and I hit play, I can see that thing getting blurrier as the animation plays on. And you can do this with almost all of the effects that they've added here, which is super, super cool. So if you wanted to do something where you're changing the focus from a foreground element to a background element, and you wanna use a blur to do that, you could totally do that here and it's non-destructive. And it goes beyond the Gaussian blur. For example, there's adjustments and this is gonna let you change the hue, the saturation, the brightness. And again, I could make this dark, what if I wanted the lights to come on? I could move this forward several frames and I could change the brightness. And then as I scrub back and forth, you can see that's now animated. The lights are coming on. You see that actually brightening up your scene. And I could think of dozens of different ways we could use this effect. The next one is pixelate. We can turn that on and you can see it just basically pixelates the background. And there's a bunch of others as well. Let me delete that and let me just talk them through. There's chroma key. That works kind of like a green screen. Sharpness will allow you to sharpen your image. There's a halftone thing. It kind of works like the pixelate thing, but you can create a halftone pattern here. So lots and lots of cool stuff. These are also sectioned into folders. So now we get to the next major update and probably one of the biggest feature updates that they've added here, and that is rigging. Now I mentioned before at the top of the video that rigging was one of the things I was having a hard time learning. It was kind of tough to figure out without any kind of uh, tutorial or documentation to kind of walk me through. There are some sample files online. I downloaded this one and you could just play it through. It's this guy doing this little punching bag thing. He's totally rigged up. It looks pretty good. So I'll open up that animation and along the bottom, you can see our little character. So let me zoom in on him. I'm gonna open up my layers and I'm gonna open up those properties. And what we see here is that our bones is con are connected to a layer group and everything in that group, uh, the arms are separated into their own layers, the legs, the bodies, those are their own layers as well. And when you select bones from the effects, what you're gonna see over here on the left-hand side is its own little menu area. So I'm gonna hit this plus bone here and that's gonna pull our character out and show us all of the bones. I could draw more if I wanted to. Oops, that was an accident. But here, this guy is already rigged up for us so we can already see his bending points. Uh, my next selection down is gonna actually let me move this. So you can take like his arm and you could like move out 
that point. Or you can pivot on this point to kind of move his arm up and down. I could move his other arm. I could probably do this with all sorts of different uh, body parts. And that's exactly what you've done if you look at this frame by frame. Uh, on the next frame, they've just moved some of those points around to get him ready to hit that punching bag. This is something I really want to do a deep dive into. And if I can figure out how to actually set up the bones, I might do a tutorial on it later on, just because I think rigging up a character would be like super useful to a lot of the work that I'm doing right now. And you guys might find it interesting too. Who knows? I'm going to tap in on my effects here and we're going to scroll down again because there's also things like mesh and perspective and warp that also kind of mix in with the rigging. They have some examples on their website that show how some of that mesh stuff works. It looks kind of cool. Some of the other features that they have in here are some layer styles. They only have one right now, which implies that they might be adding more layer, layer styles as they go. The one that they have in here is a drop shadow and you can change the blur radius. Uh, and of course, this is animatable as well. I can go in here and uh, change the offset either way, um, the Y offset as well, you know, just the normal stuff you'd find on a drop shadow. Now this is an animation I originally did frame by frame in a video that I made a few weeks ago. Uh, here's my little uh, smear frame. And you can see my character kind of moving back and forth as this like fist pops out of the sky. But if I wanted to, I could hit plus and I could go down here and there's this orient along a motion path. Uh, so you can actually move a character around and create a motion path. This is probably a bad project to show how this works. Here's a sample project that they have uh, downloadable from their website. Let me open this up. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to select this B. And you can see as I play it, the bee moves on a path. So it's kind of like looping around. You can see it kind of come in and go up and down and around. Here's what that path looks like when it's turned on. So you can kind of see the bee coming in and he's just going up and down that path. And if I go down here along the bottom, there's this tiny little icon and it's gonna show you some of your easing options and it has our easing curve on there. So you may not want an object to just fly straight across the screen and stop. You might want it to ease in and out as it's moving. Now you have a curve where you can actually do that. I think this may have been there before, but they've added some more options to it. I almost forgot to show off one of these features because I was thinking about promoting my course, Learn to Draw in 60 Days. You can check out more about that over at bradsartschool.com. But I did want to show off the parallax feature that we have here because this is a big one. I thought this was fun and the way they've automated it is just really, really nice. I'm gonna go back to my layers and I'm gonna just toggle this on. And what I've done is I've turned the parallax on for my background layer. And when I did that, I'm gonna roll up here. What it's done at the very top here is it's created a camera. Now I can select that camera and I could basically move it around. You can see I've already actually created an animation. It's showing me the path that it takes. And uh, I have set the amount of the background to like 50%. I've set the amount of the foreground to like less than that. I think it's around 30%. So as I come in here and as I move my camera, you can see the foreground and background are moving at their own rate. Now you are always able to do something similar like this in this app, but you'd have to take each layer and you'd have to experiment a little bit, right? You'd have to say, okay, we're gonna start on this frame. It's gonna start here, start on this frame, and we're gonna move the foreground this way this much go to the background layer move the background layer so much here is just automating that so when i'm thinking about laying out the scene maybe i want my fast food worker coming in i can create a motion path that would allow him to kind of bounce in almost like it looks like he's walking maybe once the character gets in there i change up the focus of the camera a little bit and i apply some gaussian blur on the background so you can see him a little better you can imagine setting up a scene with some of these new tools in a way that would really bring it to life and allow you to do things that it'd be very, very hard to just do in a like simple frame by frame animation app that this was before. I also want to take a look at this other sample animation because this one is pretty cool. Basically it's this plane and it's gonna be flying in and there's a little path that the plane leaves after it. So the plane is just a symbol and what they're doing is they're zooming it in as it comes closer to you. But as they do, they've applied a uh, spin to the propellers. So you can see the propellers spinning as it gets closer to you. And that's pretty cool. So spin's another thing that they've added over here in the layer palette underneath the properties. Some other things worth noting here is on one of these layers, let's see if we could zoom in really close on this, right here underneath 
our boat plane here, there's like it's kicking up this froth, right? Well, what that is, is that is a repeating like four or five frame animation that's just repeating on a loop. So now you have the ability to add these little loops here. So you're not just having to redraw that over and over again. You can just loop that small area. Another thing that they've added is this idea of perspective and warp and transform. And you can see that in the wake of this ship. Um, what's happening with this little white area right here is the perspective is shifting. So let's bring up our layers and our properties on this layer. And there it is, there's our perspective. So if I want to, I could toggle it off and see the original layer. And then I could see that they basically animated a perspective on this thing to give it that stretchy out feel. So it's crazy to think that this went from basically a frame by frame animation tool that allowed you to hold frames and do a handful of other things to it, to this app that allows you to do so much more. But this isn't all they added. Actually, I have a list here. I'm just gonna read them out. There are expanded vector tools. So you have vector strokes, vector fills, you have path merging now. You can also select vector points from those vector objects you create and just move those points around independently. There's also an SVG import that also goes along with some of these vector tools. SVG is a vector format. And overall, I am super impressed by what Toon Squid is doing. This feels like it's really competing with a lot of the desktop apps out there. I use Adobe Animate for a lot of the videos I do on my other channel, which are animated. And when I look at these features, I think, you know what? I can add audio here. I can animate my characters. I can do lip syncing. I could do so many of the things that I'm doing in Adobe Animate, I could potentially do it here on the iPad. I don't know if it would save me any time. Maybe if I learned a little bit more about the rigging and that sort of thing, that might help me out. But just looking at this, man, is it getting close. And I think as the resources catch up with the features that they put into place here, this is gonna be a really, really special app. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.